Greetings, respected viewers. Anyway, here I am in Kensal Green Cemetery in London, uh, and we're, I'm in front of the Dissenters Chapel. Take a look at it. Take a look at these. Are these Corinthian columns? Is it the three to eight ratio, which the Greeks believe was uh, expressive of beauty? Um, so the uh, cemetery opened in 1833, and uh, this um, neoclassical architecture is very much of the era. Um, so I say dissenters chapel. Uh, what is a dissenter? A dissenter is not in the political sense, the sentence like a, like a dissident. A dissenter was a Protestant outside the established church, as in a Protestant who was not in the Church of England. Um, so it could be a Baptist, could be a Presbyterian, a Congregationalist, a member of the Plymouth Brethren, a member of the Religious Society of Friends, better known as the Quakers. Um, anyway, so uh, what else about the dissenters? Yeah, so they had this chapel. There's also an Anglican chapel, that's to say for communicants of the Church of England. And there are Christians of various denominations. Uh, they're interred here. They're Catholics. They're Orthodox Christians. We've, I've seen some headstones in the Serbian language. Um, there are Muslims, and there might be people of other faiths as well. Certainly there was at least one um, Sikh woman, the Maharani of, I can't remember where, Dulip Singh's mother, who was buried her, here. But her immortal remains were di um, disinterred and returned to the Punjab for cremation decades after her decease. Anyhow, there are over 65,000 uh, graves here, including mausolea, including vaults, and um, you can see how it tapers away. It's almost rural. It was built for the borough of Kensington, Chelsea, which lies a little to the um, south of here. Um, and it's like an enormous park. And um, so some of the trees would have been laid out at the time. It's a little bit wild in places. Not all the tombs are well tended. Over a quarter of a million people have found their last resting place here, um, not to mind um, cremations. So we'll have a bit of a look round. Come to Kensal Green, um, come to Kensal Green Tube Station or possibly Kensal Rise Railway Station. It's very close to Kensal Green Tube Station, perhaps a five minute walk from there. Um, so it's scintillating. You may hear a train going by every so often and indeed we're quite close to the canal over that away. Not that you can see it from this angle. Um, it, it said that people are dying to get in here. I mean, people would be seen dead here. Okay, come on. It was a cheap shot, but it was too good to miss. There are also catacombs, as in un underground vaults you can walk around, and very wealthy people have paid to have their whole family spend eternity with them down there. So it's a refreshing mind of your mortality. So carpe diem, as, as Horace would say, and don't worry about money too much because uh, you certainly shan't be troubled by, by financial problems once you're in the tomb. And always remember, even the last hour is already in the grave. So don't waste a moment. Do what you actually want to do, not what other people want to do. What makes you happy? Don't be too concerned what others are gonna say and baubles and titles if that's not really what motivates you. So we should turn around this way and you'll see some of these um, tombs up high, the sort of uh, the amphora thing as though ashes were stored there. Again, it's neoclassical. Um, much of the, much of the uh, cemetery is closed to new interments. Uh, and then you see, like here, these ones which are more rectangular shaped and information, biodata etched in there. Sometimes it's falling off, sometimes it's been weathered away and it's just illegible now. Um, but uh, some people are attending their graves well. So I'm trying to think of some of the uh, famous people who find their last resting place here and they're too numerous to mention. The list is as long as my arm. There's Dr. Leander Starr Jameson, he of the Jameson Raid, that Scots physician who was a notorious or perhaps famous for what he, what he did in South Africa around 1896, friend of Cecil Rhodes. There is the Duke of Cambridge, no, not the present one, Prince William, a grandson of King George III, and he uh, was commander in chief of the British Army. There was that um, uh, Miss um, Balcom, who was a friend of Emperor Napoleon when he was in exile in St. Helena. There's Charles Babbage of Babbage's calculating machine. That was a precursor of the computer. Um, there is a um, uh, son of Haile Selassie, the last emperor of Ethiopia. Um, he found his last resting place here. Um, and there's so, so many more, as in politicians. There's um, yeah, Joseph Hume, MP, for instance. Um, there's one of George III's sons and one, another one of his daughters, Winston Churchill's um, daughter, Mary Gold, who died at the age of three, uh, and many, many more. The, uh, the actor Alan Rickman, who was called to his reward only about three years ago, uh, he went up in smoke here. Freddie Mercury, 
um, the front man of, of, the, of Queen more or less invented the notion of being a front man. Again, um, he uh, wafted his way to the ether from here as well, I'll show you the crematorium. Now he shouldn't have done that, naughty boy, because he's a Parsi. You know, Parsis, that religion started out in ancient Persia. Due to Islamic persecution, they mostly shifted to India, particularly the Mumbai area. But um, Frey was born in Zanzibar, that island off the coast of Africa, born a British citizen, which he always remained. Anyhow, he moved to this country as a teenager. But Parsis, they don't bury their dead, they don't burn their dead, they don't put them in water, because they, they believe in the four elements, winter, sorry, water, fire, earth, and I think it's air, and you mustn't define any of those. So they would put them in towers of silence in Mumbai, um, and they'd just be exposed, nude, and then to be, to be devoured by vultures. But they have to have them sort of um, caged so the vultures couldn't take a whole limb at a time. But surely the thing must reek, the, the rotting flesh. But anyway, in Mumbai, there weren't enough of these birds to take them away. So he, they should have been cremated, but he was. He died not so far away, Logan Place, I filmed it, and uh, was met here by a Parsi priest for his uh, body to be cremated. And the ashes, I think they're in a secret location. Um, his best friend, a woman, not his lover, she, uh, she, only she knows where they are. Uh, and that's, that was December 1991, he died. And he confirmed that it was AIDS he was dying of. He, he um, acknowledged that the day before he died. So let's carry on going this way. And you'll get some idea of the scale of the place. We're not going to go all the way across it. Um, and you can get tours of, uh, tours of it occasionally. So you can see the ground is quite uneven. Is that way towards Harrow Road, coming by here by car. That's where you'd want to go. Um, Christine Keeler, who was involved in that scandal with, um, what's his name, Jack Profumo, when she died, she was also cremated here. And um, many, many more. So uh, nobody else immediately springs to mind. So you can see some of the uh, monumental art, the angels, sometimes there's an image of the dear departed and some people ha are coming to look after the last resting place of their loved one. Look, someone's got sister there. Um, but anyway, some of them are neglected because as I say, they've been here for almost 200 years. Okay, so perhaps you're getting some feel for what it's like the monumental architecture and uh, the very affluent people would pay for a, a huge mausoleum like this. Uh, and that then they're going to last. This is the one I was talking about. His Royal Highness, the Duke of Cambridge, KG, as in Knight of the Garter, Commander-in-Chief of the British Army, obviously under the monarch. You can see a huge obelisk to him um, at Regent Place in London. So, uh, let me see. Let's then do it, do it. Oh, and over there, there's a mausoleum with the roof caved in. Well, the residents uh, might be somewhat discomposed as well as decomposed. Uh, all right. So we stop here and we'll do a 360 and you'll see what it's about. You can drive in here, but quite slowly. Please don't break the speed limit. The good thing about living around here is you're guaranteed quiet neighbors. Though if they do start making noise, you need to worry. Um, anyway, in the background there, you can see that huge metal structure. It used to be a massive oil drum there. That's the North Kensington area. Michael Gove live around, lives around there, but don't let that put you off. Um, so that is just a taster of uh, Kensal Green Cemetery. And you might ask yourself, is this somewhere you'd be comfortable spending all eternity?